That helps. <laughs> okay, nothing like being real professional. All right, James chapter 1. A servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So he's talking to all the children of Israel. He's talking to those that have become believers in Christ. Hence, he's talking to us as Christians because uh, we were grafted into the salvation of God. My brethren, count it all joy when you walk into various trials. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. Now that's the verse that I'm really going to be emphasizing this morning. And so we have trials, we have patience, we have waiting on God. But during all of that, he says, you need wisdom, ask him. He wants to give it to you. And so when you look at trials and patience and wisdom of God, we're waiting on God to give us an answer for every situation. Cursed. But every truth is found in Scripture. Now some of it, you say, well then how do I apply it? Well, there's, there's the spiritual uh, trick. There's when you move from your natural understanding to the spiritual. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit gives you an answer, gives you a direction, uh, lets you know what you're looking for. Here's the answer. And, but He also gives us a brain to think. He gives us an education. He gives us experience. He, you know, we're to learn from others. And so we're to use our natural understanding to the point that we also say, okay, Lord, I'm stumped. I, I really don't know what to do, which way to go. Uh, I, I want to know your answer for my life. And so as we're reading scriptures, then the Holy Spirit can all of a sudden give us a thought that doesn't even have to do with that particular scripture. But what happens when we're reading the scriptures, we're fine-tuning into the Spirit of God. It's like the old radio bands, and you can see them uh, as you would uh, fine-tune a radio, and, and all of a sudden, you know, there's no static. There's, a, there's the music or the speaker that you want to listen to. Well, in our lives, there's all levels of static. It, it, it's being in the world. And as we're in Scripture, or we're just listening to God say we're praying, or let's just say we're riding down the street, minding our own business, and all of a sudden a thought comes to you. That's the Holy Spirit giving guidance for you in your life. God is concerned about your answers because He knows the answers that He has for you. So in verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him or her. Ask God, God, I need some wisdom. I need understanding. Verse 6, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Now, when he says, don't waver, that doesn't mean you're not going to have moments of uncertainty. That does not mean you're not going to have moments of, of doubt, uh, even frustration, or even giving up. It, it doesn't mean you're not going to be normal. It means in your normalcy, your normal everyday thinking and living, that God's going to intervene. And so a double-minded person is one that once God doesn't want God, once God doesn't want God. But the Christian, we always want God. We always want His answer for our life. Now, one of the things that God says, uh, the Lord Himself says, uh, and you remember it by ask, A-S-K. Uh, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be open unto you. Because this is the will of God in your life. So you're asking God for something. You're seeking God for something. You're knocking on doors. There's a lot of doors you can knock on wondering, is this the door God's given? And the door doesn't open or it opens and you realize, whoa, this isn't where God wants me. And you just back out of the door. There'll be all sorts of doors available. 
And some are deceiving doors, some are natural understanding doors, some are, and you can look back in your life, every one of us can do this and say, wow, had I only known, I would not have made that choice. Uh, I would have asked God for something and knowing like Jesus when he performed miracles, uh, the others were very impressed and they, one scripture says they were greatly impressed. Well, when God does something in your life, and it can be little, it doesn't, you know, we're not talking about God writing a, a message in the sky for you. Something real little, very little, just between you and God, and only you and God know that God just gave you an answer, and there's a fulfillment inside. It's like, praise God. I, you know, and, and sometimes you want to tell people, and other times you don't, but maybe you want to tell somebody really close to you. It's not something you want to go out and brag about. It's not something that everybody says, whoa, look at their life. You know, uh, you know they were asking for God, and look what. Now, it could be that. Uh, our biggest thing uh, you know, is our building, the physical building here. It's like, whoa. But so many times when we're asking God for things, it's little things that only you and God know, but you know God showed you that. And you were asking and you were seeking, you were, you know, you were, you were involved in, and knocking on doors and all of a sudden one opens and you realize, God opened this door for me. You know, it's like you move somewhere and you find a friend or you get a new job and you find a friend and all of a sudden you realize, wow, God set me in the same office with so-and-so or school. You know, that often happens in school and colleges. You know, I went to this college and lo and behold, look who I met and lo and behold, it was the will of God. Well, God could have had you go to a different college. God could have had him or her go to a different college. God could, you know, how did you meet that person? And when you stop to think about it and you reflect on it, you say, wait a minute, God, I was asking for wisdom. You know, who do I date? What type of person do I want to date? What type of person do I want to marry? What type of job do I want? And you're asking God, and all of a sudden, a door is open. You realize, you just walked through a door, and, and you didn't even realize that the Spirit of God was waiting for you on the other side of that door. He was leading you into his will. So if you ask, if you lack wisdom, ask of God, and he gives it liberally. Okay, verse 7. For let him not think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now what that is referring to is, is verse 6. Uh, ask in faith. Don't be like, you know, the flag this morning. My goodness, the flag was straight out with that wind. Uh, but let you... Ask in faith, knowing God's going to open a door. God's going to have you take the step. I'll never forget, in the very first church I pastored, uh, I stepped out on faith and uh, sold the house ahead of time. I was still in seminary, but sold my house. And, and I knew God was going to, and I quit the police force. I knew God was leading me through different scriptures. I didn't have a vision. I didn't have a, you know, a, you know, a telegram sent to me or an email or, or email or text from God. But I knew in my spirit it was the time for God to move in my life. And it was by faith. I really believed he was testing me. And I didn't have a scripture that says, Thou shalt sell thy house, thou shalt wait upon me. I didn't get any of that. I just sensed it in my spirit now it's time to sell the house. Now the time to quit the job. God's going to open a door. Now, I'm not telling you to quit your job, to sell your house because you have a feeling or a thought, okay? Don't go by my examples. Don't go by my faith. You can't live on somebody else's testimony. You can't live on somebody else's faith. You can listen to it and say, oh, that quickens what I understand where God is working in my life. And so sure enough, we, uh, I quit the force, I sold the house, uh, and had to be out of the house the next Tuesday. Uh, and meanwhile, that week, a church calls me. Matter of fact, three churches, small churches called, and I got my pick. And I thought, wow, this is fun following God. I mean, not only did I get one church, I get to pick from three different churches. And so I picked this one. And later they fired me because I got the baptism of tongues. But anyway, anyway. And, and so, but you know, for the year I was in that new church, it's like I knew God was leading me. I knew God was wanting me to step. I knew God had something for me. And so 
He says, be single-minded and know that God has a specific plan for you and your life. But again, that goes back to the permissive will and the uh, specific will of God and, and that circle that we, I often talk about. The permissive will of God is out here. Uh, the perfect will of God is, is condensed. Uh, I was thinking about that this morning while we were praying and how God's love... God's love just sets you free, and free indeed, but yet He draws you specifically to Him. So you're free from the things of the world, the concerns of the world, and you're more directed to Him. It's kind of like, you know, we're talking about Sarah and Patrick's wedding yesterday. You know, they were free to... And, you know, date, look around, free to, you know, say who. And, 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 but all of a sudden they found love for each other. And even though they're, they're love, they were free in their love, now they got specific and said, oh, you're my partner and making that commitment. Well, the love is still there and it's still a great love, but it's condensed and directed. And so in our lives, we have the love of God and it's open but once we receive His will in our life, it gets condensed. This is the path to walk. This is the way you're going to walk. You're not going to look around for other gods. You're not going to look around for other situations to satisfy your spirit. Here's the will of God. Walk the will of God. And God continually blesses us in all those areas. So, I'm going to skip the Thanksgiving poem uh, I said this the other day, the time to be thankful is now, and the place to be thankful is here, and the way to be thankful is to be thankful for everything God has brought into your life. And so today's message is going to be about the love and thankfulness is now, is here, and I'll talk about that later. But here's a couple of words of knowledge or understanding I've received in the last couple of weeks. Believing in God releases love. Otherwise, it creates thanksgiving. When you believe in God, all of a sudden, and specifically, it's all of a sudden, it's not like, well, look at all the you know, philosophies of the world, you know, so, uh, socialistic and, and all these other gods or no gods and everybody's okay. And Well, if you want to believe that and have no grounding, that's your business. But when you realize you find God and you find Jesus Christ, it is such a way of truth, as Jesus says. He's the way, the truth, and the life. All of a sudden, you've come alive inside that you weren't before. You were free to, to accept and believe and follow anything, but all of a sudden now, you found the way. And when you find Jesus and the way, there's no alternative. There's no, well, I'm going to, uh, you know... <laughs> You know, I, I took courses, Kathy and I'd go to uh, the Cape and take courses for 26 years. And uh, every semester, every summer, it was a different course and all counseling courses and spirituality. And, and uh, I took two uh, on, on, under Buddhists, for, so I sat for two weeks under different Buddhists. And, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and so the whole idea of Buddhism, and, and if you, and I, I have a shelf on Buddhism, uh, is you open up one the, and the preface says, if you believe in that you found fact, then you're ignorant. Because what is fact? Now the whole idea of Buddhism, and what is truth? And so <clears throat> that's their key. So they're always searching, but never finding. <clears throat> so we could say, what is God? Well, you can do that. A lot of people do that. But then once you find Jesus, you know you don't have to say, what is Jesus? You know Je you now have a spirit come alive when Jesus comes into your life that you didn't have before. So talking to somebody about that life-giving spirit that does not have it doesn't know what you're talking about. It's like being pregnant and talking to somebody that's not going to ever be pregnant. So you can tell me, all of you mothers that have had children, what being pregnant is. And I say, uh-huh. Uh-huh, oh, okay. Oh, I get it. I understand what you went, I get it. I got it all. You know, I read books on it, I watch videos on it, I watch two of my children born. I know what it's like to be pregnant. 
Mm. You know, and you go, you know, sit down and shut up. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, don't talk to me. <laughs> Why? Because you know what was in you. You know what happened. And that's the same way with Jesus Christ. You know when he came into your life. I was once blind, but now I see. I was once lost, but now I'm found. And all of a sudden, you can't tell somebody what that's like. I was sharing that with a man down in Corning years ago uh, and for him to accept Christ or ask Christ into his life. And he said, yeah, but what's in it for me? See, he, he couldn't get that Christ was the Son of God. He couldn't get that this is his connection with God. And so believing in God releases love and it creates thanksgiving. Now here's a word of knowledge. God is not with us only when we think of Him. God is always with us so that we can think of Him. See, God is not with us only when we think about Him. God is always with us so that we can think about Him. So He will enter into our thoughts. He will enter into our contemplation. He'll enter into, and, and all of a sudden you realize, oh God, I, I need to take time for God. Uh, or God's speaking. Or God's confirming. Or God, and you realize, well, God is always with us. I read one author who said, what is prayer? And he says, thinking about God is prayer. Because the world, the flesh, the devil doesn't want you thinking about God. But think, he said, just thinking about God is prayer. Otherwise, God is already there. And if you start thinking about him, what are you doing? You're communicating with him, whether you know it or not, because what happens? He's got your attention to start thinking about God, which starts being thankful and love and, direct and all that, okay? But God is always with us. Now, here's another word. There are no problems in love that love does not have an answer for. There are no problems in love that love does not have an answer for. Okay? Love is the answer for a solution for your life, direction, for understanding. See, where there's a problem, what part of love is being ignored or violated? See, where, do you need, where does it need to be installed or where does it need to be applied? The qualities of love. And so when we say that I have a problem, then stop right there. You say, well, no, let me finish. I have a problem with him. I have a problem with her. I have a problem with them. I have a problem with this. I've got a problem. I'm upset. Then you're not applying love. You're not letting love do its thing. Did you see Jesus upset at all? Never. And now, now if he was, he, we saw him upset one time in the temple when he said, you know, you've made my house into a den of thieves. And he goes in, he's throwing over, uh, you know, I like this kind of Jesus. We ought to have a picture of that kind of Jesus hanging around. You know, throwing over tables and taking the pulpit and throwing it. And he took a cat of nine tails and he's whipping the priest, chasing him out of the, of the uh, uh, synagogue. And you say, Jesus? Yeah, Jesus. He, look, he says, I've got a lot of patience, but don't mess with the house of God. Why? Because that's where I show up. That's where people come to hear me. So don't mess with the house of God. And so other than that, there was no problem because he manifest. He was the son of God made manifest. God is love manifest. So nothing bothered him. He was so filled with himself, God in him, that what could touch that? And so you know that. You know when you're with somebody. Thanksgiving, around the corner. Now that's going to real, be a real treat to watch, uh, you know, Chicago mayor said, uh, don't have Thanksgiving meals together. Keep them down to 10 or under. Uh, you know, New York is saying that. Is that <laughs> that's not going to happen. Some of us will, but, you know... <clears throat> Some won't, <clears throat> Nancy. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, she's going to make up for the people we don't invite. So anyway, it's like, why do you want to be together? And it's family. It's family. It, it's what? Love. 
Isn't it interesting how you can get together for a celebration, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and you just put all, everything aside, all the differences aside, you just leave it alone. Now, if you stay there too long, you're going to have more differences. And, you know, but if you do it right, everybody leaves happy. People don't come in and say, you know, I remember, you know, I remember, you know, pointing fingers and, you know, not, not a healthy family. I know a lot of families do. But anyway, a healthy family just gets together and they love each other. All the differences are left outside. That's what God has for his family. That's what, see, everything we experience down here typifies what God has for us or what he, how he's made us. And so when we say, well, we have a problem with, or I have a problem with that, then what part of love don't you get? What part of love aren't you receiving? See, what part of love is not activated in your life? How about long-suffering and patience and kindness and all of that? And, and so I was talking to a man last night, uh, came to lock up the church, and, and he was in the other church, and, and, he, he, and he brought that up. And I thought, no, that's interesting. Because, and I told him, I said, because I'm teaching on that in the morning. Uh, about, he, and he said, you know, there's some issue that he was dealing with, that families were dealing with out in society. And, and he said, I just don't care about it. He said, he, he said, what's that got to do with love? Or God, that's what he was saying. What has that got to do with God? If we get more of God, that'll take care of itself, as far as the family being upset. Now, it doesn't mean you don't have to confront a situation. It doesn't mean you don't have to address something. It doesn't mean you don't have to get an opinion. Yes, you do. But you can say it with the understanding, I'm in love, and this is what I understand, and I think this is how Christ would have me respond. Therefore, I'm not upset. You can be as upset as you want, but I'm not upset. I remember, and I was thinking about this last night driving home, uh, I remember uh, apparently I cut off somebody up north in Lyons, uh, and I didn't even realize, I realized it was close when I looked, I thought, whoa, you know, because I looked one way, it's, it's a hill and a curve. And nothing's coming. I look the other way, and I'm thinking, oh, here comes a motorcycle and a car. Oh, I've got time. And then I drive out. Meanwhile, he is coming over the hill as I look. And so, so he did get close. I did cut him off. But, you know, he didn't honk or anything, so he didn't get my attention. And, I, and by the way, I just led this woman to the Lord in her house. That's, um, I can't think of her name. She's, she's ugly, just uh, mean ugly. I was so elated about it. My mind wasn't on driving. I shouldn't have been driving. But anyway, so I drive, drive into Lyons, drive out of Lyons, going over the hill, leaving Lyons, and I look in my mirror, and here's this bumper. I mean, bumper to bumper. I can't even see his hood of his car. He's right on my bumper. And I'm going over the hill, and I thought, well, I'm doing the speed limit, and I'll just move over after I get off the bridge and let him go by. And as I moved over, he pulls in right up beside me. He rolls his window and he cursing me a blue streak. I mean, a, I've never heard anybody curse. He, his curse words weren't even making sense. You know, I want to say, hey, you're supposed to put those in order. You know, uh, that one goes with this one. Those don't, you know. And I'm looking at him, and, and it's really a supernatural thing, I think. Otherwise, it'd been ugly. Cursing a blue streak. I mean, tell me about a two-year-old baby girl he's got at home, and he won't see her if I rah, 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 and, and I rah, rah. And, and I know he's cursing me out because my gray hair, right? I've got sunglasses on, gray hair. That's all he saw. I know that's what he's doing because he's a real punk. He tattoos all over him. He's a bad guy. And it's like I'm watching this guy curse in a different dimension, you know, between me and him, our carts. And, and it's like I could see his mouth going, and I could hear him, but it tickled me. It, 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 a lot of things went through my head. It tickled me, first of all, if you get out of the car, we're not going to have this dimension. If you, you know, then I'm thinking, just let the guy, and all these things go through my head. And ironically, I didn't get upset. I really, and it's like, it amazed me. Now, I did get upset later, I'll be honest with you. Uh, who, I've never cursed, ever heard anybody cursed out like that. How dare you? And then later I got insulted, but not, you know that's when the flesh stepped in. Uh, I said, and how many times we could be that way in our life? Yeah, I see you're upset. I see the situation. I see you know. I see. I see. I see. But it's not affecting me. Why? Because I'm in my car. I'm in my cocoon. I'm in my love of God. 
And, and if you want to calm down to listen, I'll talk with you. I'll apologize or I'll say, well, here's my opinion. But, but while you're like that, I'm just going to sit here in God and let it go by. Well, how many times in our life, see, now, now people, we all do this. We do this especially with relatives. You know, <laughs> Kathy's relatives, uh, she's listened to her sister's have at it uh, <clears throat> because of the political and, you know, how adamant both are. And, and the other one's going to jump in and tell them both. And Kathy says, it happens every four years. Don't jump in. Let it go. There'll be another, it'll happen again next in four more years. And it's like, have at it, girls. You know, cat fight. Ah! I'm just going to sit here and let it pass and put up four more years or whoever we get. And okay. And that's kind of like the love of God, believe it or not. How many times we don't have to get in the fray? I liked what Jim Carrey used to say. He says, hey, I don't have a dog in this fight. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm not, this fight's not mine. Why? Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm in God's love. I, I have the peace of God right now. Still have my opinion. Still going to apply my opinion. Still going to believe and behave. And, you know, but there, it's all grounded in God. Okay, so when we say, or anybody says, I have a problem, then stop right there. You have the problem. See, what part of love is being violated or not implemented? And, that, and that's your question. So when you love somebody... Uh, or, or when there's a problem, love is being violated or ignored. And doesn't mean you don't have trials and issues or temptations and failures. That's called being human. You will have trials, you will have temptations, you will have failures, but you'll have success after success. That's called being human. But when you understand the Scriptures, it's ministering to you, or God's love by His Holy Spirit is ministering to you, then you realize God is guiding you. He's giving you trust. He's establishing you. He knows the outcome. He knows the will of God. And what is he doing? He's perfecting the saints. All these things happen. When, and you start back up in, in verse 3. Knowing this, that the testing of your faith worketh patience and all this. And so the testing of your faith is how many situations are you in that you're being tested and you fail? <laughs> you know? Uh, that's us, you know, okay. But how many testings of your faith are you in and it succeed because you hung on to the principles of God? You say, well, that happens all the time. That's who you are. That's why you're here. So when you realize all this is merely tools to help perfect you as saints and to help perfect you as godly men and women who can say, I can handle this because I have the love of God in me. I have the truths of God in me. So, when you love someone, you want to hear them. You want to communicate. Communication is the key to marriage. I've got a book that's titled that. Communication, the key to marriage. Well, communication is the key to any and every relationship. Communication is the key to relationships. Uh, my wife and her son and Bud, I mean, they're like that. Okay, and they talk every morning on their iPad. They can see each other. They Skype, and it's just like him being there every morning. And, and so, what is that communication and putting them in, in relationship? Continue the relationship. And so, in our lives, if if there's an issue with people, we probably aren't communicating. Uh, and and it doesn't mean we all have to have the same ag ag agreement. It means, okay, you believe that, I believe this, you're going to apply it that way, I'm applying it this way. And we agree to communicate, we agree to get along, even though we don't believe the same way. Also, when you love someone, you want to be with them. And that's where unity comes, that's where strength comes from. That's where relationships are built. You have to be with somebody in order to build a relationship. You have to communicate with them. That means you each hear the other. You also are with them. You want to be with them. It strengthens the relationship. And likewise, you want to give them something. When you love somebody, you always want to give them something. Christmas, how many of you are already looking around for Christmas gifts? You know, you already purchased some. Or Thanksgiving, you know, you're thinking about what you're going to take to the dinner or, or whatever. And, and it's like, why? Because you want to give why? because you love that person or those people. That's all part of God's plan that he says, he wants you to communicate, wants you to be together, wants you to give your love back and forth. 
And so it might be an emotional love, a spiritual love. It might be the physical where, you know, you're taking the turkey to the dinner or the cranberry sauce or whatever it is. Well, why are you taking that little plate? I mean, how many of you have gone to somebody's house, a family's house, uh, for a gathering, and, and here you're taking your plate of food? You know, I, I like that when we have church dinners. Lord God, I hope we have them again someday. But anyway, I love watching people walk in with their casseroles. Now, you, I, I guess I've never shared that. I just enjoy that. It's like, you know, your lady's bringing your casseroles. It's like, and I think about this. You took time to make that. You didn't, you didn't just, you know, you took time to bake it. You took time, you timed it out to get it to church the right time. You get here and you say, what's the oven's left on so I can put my casserole? Yeah, I mean, you, here's this little gift that's no more than a casserole or whatever it is. You know, I, I like those, now you have those crock pots. Man, you can bring everything, crock barb oh, or soups uh, but anyway and here's here's my crock pot where can I plug it in that has always touched me as long as we've had church dinners people that is love that's love yeah see we say well no we had a church no 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 no. let's back up that's love you took time you planned it you organized it you brought it you you sat you know you bought it and, and, and then and so God says, that's what unites a body. That's why people like church dinners. That's why they really like hot dog Sundays, because they don't have to bring anything. But, you know, uh, Nancy and her crew up there cooking everything. And it's like, but on hot dog Sundays, we're all down here, and I look, and here's a whole two pews empty. I think, uh-huh, Balser is upstairs in the kitchen. They're all up there. And we go up there, and here's a whole line of tables. That What? They've been fixing they didn't need to hear the message. You didn't hear that part. They're up there. You know, it's like, do they all need to be up there? Yeah, because that's what they do. They all get up there to make all of that. And then what do we do? We get to go up and eat it. We don't, have, we don't have to do a thing. People, that's love. See, and so many times we overlook. That's love in our church. Little things that people don't get recognized for. And that's love. Uh... Yesterday morning, I came in and early, and uh, I was going to turn the heat on for the weddings, and here and upstairs, and, and I realized that some of the floors were wet. Ella, she's already been here, already cleaned and gone, and I got here pretty early. That's love. See, and how many times we have that in our church, and we don't realize that's love. That's what God is doing. So... When you lack wisdom, ask of God. He will speak to you. Hear God. When you lack wisdom, be with God. Take time for Him. He will give you wisdom. And the promise is then He will give it to you. So James 1, he talks about the trial. There's going to be trials. He talks about patience. Have patience during your trials. Or sometimes it's the trial is just waiting. How many times it's, it's hard to wait. And then ask God, and He gives wisdom, and He gives insight. He lets you be single-minded. See, and so that double-minded man is, I'm uncertain, I'm uncertain. It's okay to be uncertain, but don't stay there. You put your faith in God so you're single-minded when you hear God, and then you walk with that. And then... Uh, I, I, just to slip in verse 9, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Well, how does the brother of low degree rejoice? Uh, you know, how about you just say, <laughs> I quit. I, I don't know what to do. I just don't, you know, don't, can't hear God. I really think this. I think that one day. Then I think this the other day. And, and I, I just, I quit. And you know you don't really quit. You're just tired of thinking about it for a while. That, that's when you're of low degree. It's like, you know, you're not walking in and saying, I've got the answers. I know what I'm doing. I know where my life's head. And I'm not, no, you say, you know, God, I quit. I, I, mean, I, I prayed all I'm going to pray. Do something or it's not going to be done. That's when you're exalted. When, you, when you're weak, then you're strong. See, when you're weak, you can hear God. When you're strong, you generally don't need to hear God. I mean, you do, but we don't when we, we're... Uh, Okay, so with that in mind, you got wisdom or you need wisdom about any topic in your life, any situation in your life. 
Ask God, and He'll give you the wisdom. Comments or questions?